Hello, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching the Mr. Media Radio interview with Hagar the Horrible cartoonist Chris Brown. <laughs> I, Chris, how, how old were you when Hagar debuted? Oh, gosh. Oh, many, many years ago in a galaxy far, far <laughs> away. Uh, you know, uh, Hagar started in 1973, I think, right? 1973. We started working on it in 1972. So when we started working on it, I was exactly 20. Oh, okay. But I had been working with my dad around the studio uh, really since I was about 15. So. Yeah, so now you said we. That's what I was kind of getting at. You were involved in the strip from the beginning. Yes, from the very beginning. In fact, I, I think that my the thing I am the most proud of from that first month is that I saved Lucky Eddie, who is Hager's sidekick, mm -hmm. from the wastebasket. My father was going to use Lucky Eddie in one gag, and then that was it. Oh. You would never see Lucky Eddie again. And I, I literally took it out of the wastebasket and uncrinkled it and held it up in front of him, and I said, this is a keeper. This is the Robin to your Batman, you know, <laughs> so, the, the, the Sancho Panza to your Don Quixote. So uh, uh, I'm very pleased with that, and uh, I'm pleased with that on a number of levels. But um, uh, all the characters in the strip are based on members of, of our family. And Lucky Eddie is very special to me because he is based on uh, Edmund Brown, who was uh, my, my father's brother. Oh, and who passed away several years ago, but uh, he lived long enough to see himself semi-immortalized in uh, in uh, in comic strips as Lucky Eddie. So. And and what about uh, Hager's wife? Hager's wife Helga was based on my wonderful mother uh, Joan Brown. Oh, Rose. Yes, and uh, uh, you know, like my father, Joan was. Uh, uh, Irish American on both sides of the family, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, her ancestors came from County Clare, and my father's ancestors came from County Cork in Ireland, both desperately poor uh, places, and uh, they met in uh, in New York mm -hmm. and fell in love. Uh, she worked in the in the uh, subscription uh, the circulation department at Newsday, uh, and uh, my father uh, started dating her, and as he liked to say, he took her out of circulation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, only my father could pull off that joke. Sorry. That's all right. Well, you know, it's funny for me is that, you know, having read this strip from the very beginning, uh, <clears throat> my mother-in-law's name, Helga. Really? True. True story. Oh my gosh! You know my wife, I've her mother. I've met a couple of Helgas in in my life, and uh, and uh, they're rare, yeah. but they're good. <laughs> and, and and what's what's odd is, and I mean no disrespect to my my late mother in law, but when I met her, she looked a lot like Helga in Hagar. All right, she, woman of substance. Yes, exactly. And she changed <laughs> quite a bit over the over the time. I like to think that I tamed her or something, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it always struck me as funny to. Read the strip yeah. and go, oh, right, that's the other Helga in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, well. My, my mother was the inspiration on many levels for Helga, and that started my dad creatively down the path to, to basing all the characters in the strip, including the dog. The dog is based on, on Snurt, a real dog that my father had. <laughs> and, uh, and Hamlet, the thin little wisp of a boy was based on me when I was much thinner and wispier. <laughs> and uh, Honey was based on my sister Sally. And uh, Lute, the wandering minstrel, was based on my brother Chance, mm -hmm. who now does High and Lois with uh, uh, Greg and Brian Walker. Uh, and the reason that my brother was a wandering minstrel in the strip is that he was in a uh, rock and blues band in 1972 and 73. So, well, so let's let's advance the story a little further. Uh, tell us a little about when the time came that you actually 
stepped into your father's uh, rather large footsteps uh, to take over Hagar? Well, in, uh, let's see, my, my mother passed away in 1985. And in 1988, my dad started to get sick. And uh, at first we thought that his diabetes was getting worse, but it turned out that he had um, uh, cancer. He had a very uh, rare and inoperable uh, uh, cancer in his esophagus. And uh, they couldn't quite treat it with... Uh, uh, they ordinarily would have treated this kind of cancer with radiation, and they couldn't because it was too close to his heart. And that, that seemed to set him up for, uh, 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 as soon as the doctor saw where it was and what it was, he knew that my dad only had a, a few months left. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very sad time, very, very stressful time. And uh, my, my brother and my fiancé and myself spent many many days on end in my father's hospital room there in Sarasota. And um, uh, it, was, uh, it was a long, uh, long, sad period. And then uh, at the end of that period, uh, uh, when my dad did pass away, uh, Joe D'Angelo, my father's boss at King Features, uh, the then president of King Features, came down to Florida uh, for my father's funeral and stayed for a few days and was very gracious. And uh, he uh, took my brother and I out to breakfast one morning and asked us formally if we would be interested in continuing drawing the strips, drawing Hager and High and Lois. And we said, uh, yes, please. <laughs> don't make us go get real jobs <laughs> please let us continue cartooning and uh we were we were very grateful to him i you know the the syndicate uh syndicates are sort of your your partner when you're doing a a comic strip and there are good syndicates and not so good syndicates and uh we've been very blessed uh king features has been obviously great to us they have a great sales team and all like that. But uh, also, Joe D'Angelo was, was and is, uh, he's no longer the president there, but what a class guy. What a great guy. And uh, uh, really changed my life, you know, uh, and my brother's life really uh, gave us uh, the ability to continue doing this. I mean, I would, I would love to continue drawing Hager regardless, but, you know, you... You have to have somebody who writes the checks who who agrees that you should be the one to, right. to draw it, and uh, Joe D'Angelo was that guy. Yeah. And, so you uh, took over you took over Hagar, but uh, yeah. uh, Chance didn't immediately jump in on High and Lois. He was still continuing as a minstrel, I guess, for a while. Well, uh, actually, uh, uh, Chance was Chance was working on High and Lois for oh yeah oh, for years I didn't before that. this. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was in the seventies when, uh, when uh, you know, and, and Chance didn't really give up his music career. He just sort of put it on the back burner and put uh, working with with us on the comic strips on the front burner. And um, uh, it was really um, around. I think it was around nineteen eighty that my brother and I. And my parents all moved to uh, Sarasota, Florida. It was at least early 80s, late... All of us that, that okay, this is serious now. We're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to be cartoonists now. <laughs> and no, so my brother was actually, he worked for years on, on High and Lois. Uh, it was... Um, uh, you know, when, when Dad actually passed away, it was, um, there was like a little bit of, okay, now what do we do? But, uh, but essentially, what we basically have done is we've continued to do what we were doing, 
And, uh, you know, my brother used to work uh, very closely with dad on High and Lois, and now he was working with uh, Mort Walker and uh, Brian and Greg Walker on High and Lois. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it was a strange time. It was, a, it was a, a strange transition. There was a period of about a year where I was writing the gags, doing the pencils, doing the inking, and doing the lettering, and uh, which, which ordinarily we would be done by two or three or four different mm -hmm. people. And uh, that year, when I, was, when I was doing all those jobs, it was, it was a little much. And I think, that, uh, I, think that, I think the gags were still okay, but uh, the, as I look back on it now, I realize that I, I didn't really have my, my chops, as we say, as an anchor. And I really needed, uh, I really needed some uh, professional help. And I don't mean a psychiatrist. No, 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 no. Never suggest that. <laughs> um, so uh, my father had worked with uh, a, a great uh, political cartoonist and a uh, famous anchor named Dick Hodgins, and uh, they had done a couple of graphic novels that appeared in Europe of Hager. And um, Dick came on board to help me with the inking. And uh, a few years later, Bud Jones, who had done some of the gag writing, came on board in a larger way to write more of the gags. And uh, uh, my life's been better yeah, since. Very good. Well <laughs> I'm, I'm able to focus more on what I do best, which which is uh, uh, writing a few gags and uh, and doing a whole lot of drawing. And uh, I'm happier. I'm happier right. doing it that way. Well, uh, so. let's take one more quick break. Uh, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching the Mr. Media radio interview with Hagar the Horrible cartoonist Chris Brown. And we'll be right back. 